Drawing too much current from an electrical system can be quite dangerous because large electric currents result in large power dissipation in the wiring, which means lots of heat, and that heat can cause fire. And so we want some kind of overcurrent protection, a protection mechanism that switches off the entire system when too much current is being drawn. Now the oldest and simplest type of overcurrent protection is the so-called fuse. So a fuse is essentially a thing that contains a very thin piece of wire and the current flows through that wire. Now once the current reaches a certain magnitude or beyond, that wire melts and therefore the fuse no longer conducts electricity and the system is switched off. The problem with this is that the fuse gets destroyed and has to be replaced. So once you've fixed the problem, you know, you've figured out the reason why you were drawing so much current, you solve that problem, you then also have to replace the fuse. A more modern type of overcurrent protection is the circuit breaker. Now a circuit breaker does exactly the same thing as a fuse, except it doesn't get destroyed in the process. So once you fix the problem, you can simply go in and reset the breaker and keep using it. A circuit breaker is essentially just a switch that automatically opens when a large electric current is detected. And that's also why you can reset it. It is just a switch, and so once you fix the problem, you can just manually close it again. So in order to figure out how exactly this switch, this, this kind of magical switch works, I've actually got a circuit breaker here, which we're going to be taking apart, uh, so we can take a look inside of what actually happens. Now I would like to point out that this circuit breaker perhaps looks a little bit different than the breaker switches that you're used to. That's because this is a so-called motor protection switch, which basically means it's a breaker switch specifically designed to be used on a three-phase electric motor. So on this side you connect it to a power supply, and on this side you connect it to some kind of electric motor, and then it prevents the motor from drawing too much current and it looks a little bit different from most breaker switches. It's got, it's got these push buttons instead of a, a flippy thing like most breakers have, but it operates using the same principle and it's the only thing I have laying around and therefore we'll be taking a look at this guy today. Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look at the outside of this breaker. Now, as you can see, it's got three inputs and three outputs, so you can have three phase electricity coming into it, and then three phase coming out to your electric motor. And so essentially what this is, is a package of three breaker switches combined. And so that means that when the current on either one of these phases becomes too large, it switches off the electric system. Also, you can see it's operated by these push buttons. So this one turns it on, and this one turns it off. Um, and then over here, we've got a screw which you can use to adjust the maximum current between 1 and 1.6 amps. So it's a customizable breaker as well, which is pretty nice. Okay, so let's take a look inside. So this looks like a pretty complicated mechanism, and it kind of is, actually. So the first thing I'd like to point out is that it's spring-loaded. So turning it on, as you can see, requires a bit of force, because when you turn it on, when you close the switch, that actually loads a spring. And that's a very important detail in the operation of a breaker switch. It's spring-loaded. That's the reason why it's it's able to open so quickly and so violently because it's, it's actually spring-loaded. So when you turn it on, you load a spring and lock it into position. And when the breaker opens, that switch is simply unlatched and it jumps back into the open position. So the energy that is required to actually open the switch is already put in by the person who switched it on. So now, of course, the question is, what causes this spring mechanism to be unlatched and this switch to jump back open? Well, first of all, we've got the so-called thermal protection mechanism. So as you can see, we've got three strips over here. So the electric current runs into such a strip all the way to the top of it. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Let's see if we can kind of show that. 
it goes into the strip all the way to the top of the strip where it goes into this coil around the strip and then all the way back down and from there on it goes into the next part of the breaker which we're going to talk about later on but what this means is that the more current runs through this strip the warmer the strip becomes and these strips are not normal metal strips they're actually bimetallic strips a bimetallic strip um, is a strip that curves when it warms up because it, it's made of two different metals stuck to each other which means one of the metals expands more than the other one when it, when the strip heats up and that causes it to curve and when these strips start to curve they push against this bit of the mechanism which is able to unlatch the spring and as you can see right there it popped so what happens when lots of electric current flows through this thing is these bimetallic strips start heating up and they start bending and they start pushing against this part of the mechanism which then unlatches the spring now that takes a little while to happen uh, it might take a few seconds to happen so it's not a very fast form of protection but it is able to detect relatively low electric currents so this one is uh, rated for 1.6 amps and this is able to detect anything slightly over 1.6 amps but again it does act quite slowly so this protection mechanism is there to prevent from normal overcurrent right from too, men too much current draw from the electric motor in this case or if this was some kind of other breaker switch too many appliances connected to it you know things like this but it's not a very good protection against uh, short circuits it does work for short circuits because a short circuit means lots of current so it'll definitely deactivate the switch but it's co it's kind of slow it takes a little bit too long for this to be a safe uh, short circuit protection system which is why there is another form of protection built into it specifically to protect against short circuits and this is actually a magnetic mechanism and this is actually very hard to see and I'm gonna have to use my screwdriver here as well but if you look carefully I'm gonna bring this really close to the camera now yeah you can see that there is a coil right there it's wrapped in some like white electrical tape ish stuff okay and that coil that coil attracts a piece of metal which is attached right there and if that piece of metal is pulled down into the coil by the magnetic field that it creates that also as I will demonstrate right now unlatch the spring and open the switch now this coil actually turns out to be a pretty crappy electromagnet it's not very effective and so under normal circumstances the magnetic field from that coil will not be strong enough to pull down that piece of metal and the switch will remain closed even when we're drawing slightly too much current so this is 1.6 amps so even if we're drawing say 3 amps maybe 4 amps even then that electromagnet will not be strong enough to pull down the piece of metal but of course in that case the bimetallic strips will do their job however if the electric motor connected to this breaker just shorts out and draws 100 amps suddenly from this system when we're drawing loads and loads of current which is what happens when there is a short circuit only then will that electromagnet be powerful enough and pull down the piece of metal and trip the breaker and so the magnetic protection only works with very very large electric currents the electric currents that you'll see when there is a short circuit somewhere but the advantage of it is that it's extremely fast it, it operates within milliseconds whereas the bimetallic strips take a little bit longer to do their work and so what we have the combined protection mechanism is we have these bimetallic strips protecting the thermal protection preventing small overcurrents you know just too much current being drawn by the motor or by some appliances slightly over the threshold 
uh, that takes slightly longer to activate, but it's probably fine because the system will handle a slight overcurrent for a small amount of time. And then for short circuits, we have an extremely fast protection mechanism, which is in there, which is the magnetic protection. And so those two mechanisms are combined in a breaker switch to make sure that your house does not catch fire uh, when there is a short circuit or when you're drawing too much current using your devices and appliances. Anyway, this is how most circuit breakers work. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course, thank you for watching.